WWF during the Attitude Era was different. And by different, I, I mean absolutely insane. So today we're going to be checking out some of the craziest moments from that golden era. If you are new here, my name is Adam. And I'd love some thumb love. Click a like, click a sub. Let's do this. New customers only. I've teamed up with the beautiful people over DraftKings to bring you an offer you don't want to refuse. New players can sign up today, play $5. Just $5 and receive $50 in casino credits instantly. It's insane. We got more real money games added on the regular. We got blackjack, we got roulette, we got live dealer games all ready to be played from your fingertips whenever and wherever you feel like it. And just two notes, DraftKings is very safe, it is very reliable, and it is very, very secure. Handing out over 100 million in jackpot winnings so far. It's crazy. By the way, we got something that most other places don't. We got DraftKings exclusive games. Exclusive real money games that you won't find anywhere else. So head on over to the DraftKings Casino app right now. Sign up with promo code Adam Kaiser, just like it is flashing on the screen right now. Play $5, get $50 instantly in casino credits. What are you waiting for? Go enjoy. Oh, we're straight in my stone cold. Oh, I need to re I I Sorry, I need to watch that game, man. Can you just like, I, I know WWE today is in a great spot. It's doing well, all right? But I swear, just that music hitting and it's giving you something immediately. And the crowd just, it was a such. Stone cold entrance up there. Top two with Triple H. Look at the fucking crowd, man. Look at the aura. The Attitude Era of World Wrestling Entertainment was a time when sports entertainment raced a grittier, more contentious approach that encouraged Trey? more violence, yeah. obscenity, yeah. and sensuality. Puppies. While WWF was in the thick of its illustrious Attitude Era from 1996 to 2002, there was never a greater time to be a pro wrestling fan. And can I just say, like, at the start, I still do watch wrestling um, on and off. But, like, a lot of people prefer today's product, and that's completely fine. It's probably because you're younger, and this is what you watch week in and week out. But for a lot of us, we've seen both. We've been through it all. And I'm telling you right now, this era was the best. It was the best. It might not be as extravagant as worldwide. It was still worldwide, but in, in the terms of, like, social media and stuff, it wasn't as big as it is today. It's a bigger product today, I'd say, but it wasn't as good. And the reason it's bigger is because, again, social media, everything's bigger than what it was back then, in a way. You know what I mean? For this video, we've compiled some lists of the wildest moments of the attitude. And, ple and please do tell me, you're absolutely entitled to disagree. That's completely fine. Let me know down below what your favorite um, era was during... Since then, if you've been around that long. But either way, tell me what your favorite era is down below. this video, we've compiled some lists of the wildest moments of the Attitude Era was, in 2000. It was Without TV further 14. delay, let's Not get PG. started. We can still today go back and watch <laughs> any episode, segment, or match from the Attitude Period and be reminded of why we are wrestling fans. Since it was ranked as the fourth best thing of the 1990s, with a roster packed with legendary names such as Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker, Mick Foley, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Kane, Kurt Angle, Jesus. Big Show, Chris Jericho, Rikishi, Booker T, Edge, Christian, The Hardy Boys, The Dudley Boys, Trish Stratus, Lita, and more. WWE's Attitude Era. And when he says more, there was so much more. So so, so, so much more. It hasn't even get into, like, the, the hardcore, like, kind of um, card. There was usually hardcore matches every week. Backstage, it was just mental. Probably the best word to describe uh, it. was the most successful period in company history. You're fired. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Very few wrestlers sat idle during this period, and almost every wrestler in the company was entangled in a storyline. At the time, the face of the company was Steve Austin, whose rival, The Rock, was right behind him, sharing those prestigious top spots on the roster. 
Although we do have a special fondness for the new generation era, it was crucial for the corporation to True. update its family-friendly image in order to remain relevant. I had it to. was fashionable to be a fan, and you could watch terrific wrestling programs on TV just about whenever you wanted. TV ratings were at an all-time high. Sit through one three-hour episode of Monday Night Raw, and you'll be longing for the old days. This era captures everything that I truly miss about wrestling. Proper storytelling. If I remember correctly, um, ep episodes of Raw back then was like an hour and a half. At most two hours, I think. So they had so much going on in shows every single week. They were packing shit into that one hour, 90 minutes, two hour kind of time frame. And there was also less ads on TV at the time too. Obviously today there's an advertisement every 35 seconds. But there was so much going on. They almost had no room to cram it into, which is why obviously over time they extended the periods. Amazing in-ring work, varied match stipulations, and outrageous characters that definitely felt larger than life. These are not just storylines. These were epic sagas that were happening in wrestling, and never again did we feel the same with the media again. Shane McMahon is on Nitro! And then the, oh, the WWE That's war. not enough. Holy. The matches in this era took risks. In the Attitude Era, WWE climbed back to the top of the wrestling world by taking chances. People got hit with chairs, ah. set on fire, thrown off the tops of gigantic structures, and run over by cars on a weekly basis. True. All of these things kept my interest. And when you mix that up with a good story, you're presented with the most awesome moments in life. Sure. The Attitude Era ripped off Extreme Championship Wrestling's hardcore wrestling phenomenon, but the fact that this single era brought the highest ratings that the WWE has ever had should tell you about the success and reception it deserves. And to whom do we owe our gratitude for everything that the Attitude Period has provided photo. for us? Nobody else but Vince McMahon. The best thing the man has ever done for the business and wrestling itself, despite the fact that he has made some of the most dubious judgments in the industry, was to initiate this trend. It's always worthwhile to revisit this era of wrestling, since it was so inventive, fascinating, and enjoyable. Fans of wrestling are still right. hoping for this age to return. It will but never. since WWE returned to the PG era, they are no longer interested in presenting compelling storylines and are instead overly focused on worthless in-ring work. As a result of seeing wrestling getting worse and worse, it makes going back to the Attitude Era a When was this video uploaded? A year ago? I don't agree with what he's just said there. At all, man. I think, th I think the WWE right now is in the best spot it's been in. Even a year ago, it was still great. Since the Attitude Era. I think that's a real bad take. A lot better than we remembered. And these are the 10 wrestlers that are responsible for making the Attitude Era so great. If you wanted to get a whiff of the essence of wrestling at this time, <laughs> to feel its electricity, there exists a match that exemplifies everything that was the Attitude Era. The names Grandmaster Sexe and Scotty Too Hotty don't particularly scream superstar when you hear them, do they? But back during the Attitude Era, and especially in 2000, the team of Too Cool were huge superstars. Fans were fervently supporting everyone at the Is this time. The guys that done but these the, performers the were drawing the, the, the biggest the crowds worm. outside of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. WWE wasn't yet utilizing the term cruiserweight. The villainous duo of Too Sexy Brian Christopher and Too Hot Scott Taylor was formed in 1998. <laughs> but it wasn't until June 1999 that they started to become well known. A storyline involving nepotism between Christopher and Jerry the King Lawler had been hinted at by WWE prior to their tag team match, it should be noted. And planning his head just bounced off the, the floor like a basketball. In typical outrageous form, John Cole it? started dancing their way to the ring and in the process <laughs> danced their way into the hearts of the oh, WWE so fans. Dumb. That was so what funny. was it that actually gave their popularity a boost? Becoming friends Rikishi. with Rikishi Fatu yep. in an odd way. The Head Shrinkers and the Sultan were two gimmicks that Rikishi had used in the WWE. But Rikishi seemed to have the most appeal. Whether or not that is because he rubbed his behind in superstars' loved faces it. or not, one can only speculate. He loved but the it. mean, the tough face, someone bro. who could dance was a wildly good fit for Too Cool, and they created magic together. 
All through 2000, the trio would dance together after their matches, and they'd convince Rikishi to do so with the yellow shades that, for some reason, transformed him. <laughs> At the 2000 Royal Rumble, the three men had a moment where they were the only three in the match, and they decided to do their oh pack dance, I remember much this. to the delight of Madison Wait, what Square. Year was this? 2000 Royal Rumble, the three men had a moment where they were Bro, that was 24 years ago. Oh my god, I remember this so clearly. The only three in the match, and they decided to do their patented dance, That's much crazy. to the delight of Madison Square Garden. Get a shot of this! Look at these people! Of course, Rikishi then threw both Christopher and Taylor out. Too Cool defeated Edge and Christian to capture the tag team titles, and although Scotty would win belts with Rikishi in 2004, this would be Christopher and Scotty's only reign. As I was about to say, like, did they get, did these guys split up, or what? What happened? I feel like they just disappeared. Is he dead? Why do I feel like he's dead? He died in 2018. Fucking hell, man, that's horrendous. Oh shit. As a duo. Rikishi, father Rip. of the Usos, left the group in late 2000 after it was revealed that he had inexplicably run down Stone Cold yep. Steve Austin a year earlier. If you've made it this far and have enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like I button haven't, and I have enjoyed just that to one part to be about into our today's shot being giveaway. awful. Once you do it, comment I subbed down below. Without further ado, let's get to the most exciting moment. I ain't gonna lie though, man. I, I thought this was gonna be a compilation of wild moments. Kind of has been, but it also kind of hasn't been. In March 2001, Scotty was written off TV with a broken ankle from Kurt Angle, but in reality, he it? had serious neck issues that would plague the rest of his career, and he needed surgery. What? Later that same year, Sex A was released from WWE after he was arrested for attempting to cross the Canada-United States border with illegal <laughs> drugs in his possession. This was the beginning of issues that would hurt Christopher. That was pretty much it for Too Cool in the Attitude Era. Scotty would return to the company following neck surgery and eventually team up with Rikishi on SmackDown following the brand split. As mentioned earlier, they'd win the tag belts once. What do uh -huh. they currently do? Brian Christopher sadly took his own life in oh, July 2018. Fuck. After being stopped for drunk driving and then attempting to avoid capture, he hanged himself in his cell. Despite being only 46 years old, it is long thought that he had fought alcohol and drug addictions. Taylor reflected on his passing Jesus. by saying, Brian and I were different individuals outside of the ring. We didn't go on any trips together, share a room, or actually hang out. But each time we passed that curtain, our combined power worked. Magic, which cannot be replaced. We were just too cool. BC, you will be missed. We were just very different God people. God damn, that is went, horrendously so sad. Five years. You know, it was sad, man. I knew uh, towards the end it was it was getting worse and worse. And uh... Taylor is a coach for WWE at the Performance Center and is credited with helping to shape many of the stars we know and love today. He came up with her finisher, The Woman's Right, according to Lacey Evans, who spoke with TalkSport. Rikishi is enjoying retirement and is a WWE Hall of Famer. Is not he aged one bit. makes appearances on the independent circuit one bit. and supports the younger generation of Samoans coming into the business, like Jacob and Sefa Fatu. Be sure to watch the worst botches and mistakes in WrestleManias. Man, this video was nice. I like, I always like these type of videos, but this is, this was not, this, <laughs> man, why this moment's in attitude? I expected more of this shit. I expected more of that, and I, I just don't know how we get on to Wildest Moments of the Attitude Era and Scotty Too Hotty. And um, has anyone else said about this? This video has nothing to do with the title. I am losing it. If you've watched this whole video, I've probably wasted all of your time. I do apologize. My time's been wasted too. <laughs>